Um, hello, everyone. My name is Tyrone. I'm from Monash University, Australia. Today, I will talk about the annotation free format for representing multimodal data features. In the example on the right, a new class of cells was identified from a signature which arose from an ensemble of multi omics markers. Uh, we can see that there's different data types here multi omics, transcription data, histone data, methylation data, and proteome data. So individually, these blocks of information give valuable uh, insight, but it's only when they're combined that we get um, a more complete picture of the biological system. In this case, a new category of cell was identified. So we can see that multi-omics data harmonization can reveal information that's invisible in single omics data. We can exploit this adaptation metadata towards a goal of personalized medicine. For example, in this study on the right, uh, metabolite pro proteins, transcripts, and other patient metadata, such as physiological uh, traits like blood type or age and other factors are added. These are, are studied together and help provide a better treatment. So this integration of various omics da uh, data, we have shown that it's necessary to integrate this to understand bi biological systems holistically, which can in turn lead to personalized medicine. But all these different types of data formats and standards are very diverse, which makes this data integration very challenging. So we propose an intermediate form of data and with the aim of unifying high dimensional and multimodal data types. And in this talk, I will first describe each four broad classes of data types. And then at the end of it, I will propose a format to unify all of this together. So we have quantitative data uh, in the form of abundance matrices, quantitative data in the form of genome coordinates, sequence data in the form of raw FASTA or FASTQ files, and categorical data or metadata, and pa including patient health records. The first data type is the quantitative measurements in the form of matrices. So these are very common, for example, in transcriptomics data, which are shown in uh, count tables or adjusted count tables. We use an example of a study that we perform where there's four different omics data types of uh, lipidome, metabolome, proteome, and transcriptome. And these were matrices of data gener generated from next generation sequencing or mass spectrometry. So with this, we found correlations between features across each omics data block, and the red lines show strong positive correlation. The blue lines show strong negative correlation, and each individual data block is a different color. So, uh, the second form of data, quantitative measurements in the form of genome coordinates, we produce an RNA sequencing analysis result using our annotation free data format. So instead of doing data at the gene level, we move closer to the raw data and, and represent them as genomic coordinates on the region of the genome. This data was from the CQC and MACQ3 consortium and was used as an example for LIMA. You can see that the original results are on the right, a PCA of PCA1 and 2. And after we re recorded the um, the, the genome into blocks, we can show that we found the same result. We replicated the pattern on the plot where the two groups are, have sh show quite similar patterns, even though the scales are slightly different. Uh, the third format of data is that uh, we demonstrated that obtaining signal directly from sequence data is possible. So this is, uh, Row fast A and fast Q files. We use a deep learning approach to classify sequences that have the CTCF motif and sequences that don't have the CTCF motif. And we use this to recover signal from multi omics data with a convolutional neural network. And you can see that we use attack seq, chip seq, and rip seq for three omics data types. We have sequences enriched for CTCF and null sequences without the CTCF motif. And then we're able to recover this signal in the data. So we show that 
it's possible to work on raw data directly. The last form of data is uh, metadata, actually. It's, uh, we, for example, if we develop a classification model like the previous example of deep learning, we can include the data set at metadata as extra features along with the data. For example, we can find um, antibiotic resistant genes in bacteria, which are known, and then we train the model on it to distinguish between antibiotic resistant genes and non-antibiotic resistant genes to predict the virulence of the, of the strain or, or the infectiousness of the strain. And we can also include patient data such as other physiological traits like um, age and so on. So we attempt to unify these genomic data formats by representing most data types the function of the genome. Uh, one, it can be at the gene level, at a coordinate level, or at the raw sequence level. And this has one advantage of being annotation free. So it will theoretically be effective on non-model organisms and it fits into existing pipelines as well. So with this proposed format, we, we will be able to find patterns across uh, standardized data omics layers. We can represent genomic data features in new ways and visualize them with interactive browsers. And thank you for your time. <laughs>